Hibernation 24. Grizzlies Growls presents Stories from a Hibernation. A Handy Guide for Beggars, especially those of the Poetic Fraternity, by Rachel Lindsay. Part 2 A Mendicant Pilgrimage in the East. Life Transcendent, this being the name of praise given to a fair lady. I used to think when the corn was blowing of my lost lady, life transcendent, of her valiant way, of her pride resplendent. For the corn swayed round like her warrior band when I knelt by the blades to kiss her hand. But now the green of the corn is going, and the winter comes, and a springtime sowing of other grain on the plains we knew. So I walk on air where the clouds are blowing, and kiss her hand where the gods are sowing stars for corn in the star fields new. In the Immaculate Conception Church Hunted by friends who think that life is play, Shaken by holy loves, more feared than foes, By beauty's amber cup that overflows, And pride of place that leads me more astray, Here I renew my vows, and this chief vow, To seek each year this shrine of deathless power, Keeping my springtime cornland thoughts in flower, while labor gnarled gray Christians round me bow. Arm me against great towns, strong spirits old. St. Francis, keep me road-worn, music-fed. Help me to look upon the poor house-bed as a most fitting death, more dearer than gold. Help me to seek the sun-burned groups afield, the iron folk, the pioneers free-born, Make me to voice the tall men in the corn. Let boyhood's wild flower days a bright fruit yield. Scourge me, a slave that brings unhallowed praise to you, stern virgin in this church so sweet, if I desert the ways wherein my feet were set by heaven in prenatal days. The Old Gentleman with the Lantern, and the People of His Household. Part 1. The Savage Necklace. The reader need not expect this book to contain any nicely adjusted plot with a villain, hero, lawyer, papers, surprise, and a happy ending. The highway is irrelevant. The highway is slipshod. The highway is as the necklace of a gypsy or an Indian, a savoured string of pebbles and precious stones, no two alike, with an occasional trumpery suspender button or peach seed. Every diamond is in the rough. I was walking between rugged farms on the edge of the oil country in western Pennsylvania. The road, almost dry after several days of rain, was gay with butterfly-haunted puddles. The grotesque swain who gave me a lift in his automobile for a mile is worth a page, but we will only say that his photograph would have contributed to the gaiety of nations, that he was the carved peach stone on the necklace of the day. 
There was a complacent cat in a doorway that should have been named Scrambled Eggs and Milk, so mongrel was his overcoat. There was a philosophic grasshopper reading inscriptions in a lonely cemetery, with whom I had a long and silent interchange of spirit. Even the graveyard was full of sun. On and on led the merry morning. At length came noon, and a meal given with heartiness, as easily plucked as a red apple. For half an hour after dinner in that big farmhouse we sat and talked religion. O oh, pagan in the cities, the brand of one's belief is still important in the hayfield. I was delighted to discover this household head by conviction to the brotherhood of which I was still a nominal member. Their lingo was a taste of home. Our people, our plea, the pious unimmersed. Thus did they lead themselves into paths of solemnity. Then, in the last five minutes of my stay, I gave them my poem sermon. The pamphlet made them stare, if it did not make them think. Splendor after splendor rolled in upon the highway from the four corners of heaven. Why, then, should I complain if about four o'clock the prosy old world emerged again? The wagon track now followed a section of the Pennsylvania Railroad, and railroads are anathema in my eyes when I am afoot. There appeared no promising way of escape, and now the steel rails led into a region where there had been rain even this morning. More than once I had to take to the ties to go on. When the mud was at all passable, I walked in it by preference, fortifying myself with these philosophizings. Cinders are sterile. They blast man and nature, but the black earth renews all. Mud upon the shoes is not a contamination, but a sign of progress, eloquent as sweat upon the brow. Who knows but the feet are the roots of a man? Who knows but the rain on the road may help him to grow? Maybe the stature and breadth of farmers is due to their walking behind the plow and the damp soil. Only an aviator or a bird has a right to spurn the ground. All the rest of us must furrow our way. Thus will our cores be enriched. Thus will we give fruit after our kind. Whistling pretty hard, I made my way, and now I had to choose between my rule to flee from the railroad and my rule to ask for hospitality before dark. At length I said to myself, I want to get into a big, unsophisticated house, the kind that is removed from this railroad. I want to find an unprejudiced host who will listen with an open mind and let me talk him to death. To keep this resolve, I had to hang on till near eight o'clock. The cloudy night made the way dim. At length, I came to a road that had been so often graded and dragged it shed water like a turtle's shell. I crossed the railway at right angles and plowed north. I followed it a mile, shaking the heaviest mud from my shoes. And led by the light of a lantern, I approached a dim gray farmhouse in what would have been, in the daytime, a red barn. Thanks for listening to Stories from the Hibernation. Comment on the website at grizzly.libsyn.com. This program is sponsored by donations from people like you and is released with a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives license.